Hello, Musto0063 back to finally finish off Mega Man 7. Last video, I beat the first three stages of the Wily Fortress, so that just leaves Wily 4. And this is the last level, there's no second skull, there's no screw you kind of thing, with a trick about it being the final level or anything. But yeah, this one's going to be nothing but boss fights, and it's a bit of a chore. But uh, nevertheless, uh, on the drop down screen, you can see we've got the prize of six large bolts, a weapon tank, and an extra life. Not that I really think I need any of them, but oh well. And here, of course, we come to our classic Mega Man boss rush. So, on the top layer, on the left hand side, is Freeze Man. And he is weak to the junk shield. Not, again, a weapon I would necessarily use. But it does a good job of completely screwing with his pack. Um, but a downside to it being, you probably tend to have to be a little bit closer to Freeze Man than I would ideally like. So, yeah, again, probably one of those ones that I would, to be honest, I prefer the, the you know, just the hecticness of the kind of the, the fight, the, you know, the, the Mega Bust. I really enjoy that. But, um, yeah, Junk Shield is his weakness, although, again, with any shield weapon where you've got to get close to a Rogue Master, not necessarily always the easiest thing. And on the top layer on the right hand side is Slash Man, and he's weak to the Freeze Cracker. And thank God I can actually use this weapon on him. I've been wanting to do this for so long. Screw Slash Man. Oh boy. Yeah, Freeze Cracker does wonders on him. It basically well, it completely freezes him, completely renders him cantonic, uh, and it kind of gets him annoyingly up to his the top area again. But uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, yeah, completely as with all of them. In fact, as you'll see on every single. Um, boss fight here. When you use their weapon weakness against them, you completely ruin their um, pattern and whatnot, and just you know it completely renders them almost stunned um, for for a while, which obviously doesn't tend to happen, or indeed, well, really happen at all on the uh, the classic uh, Mega Man games on the NES. So uh, you hit a robot monster and it does massive damage, but it never it never stuns them or kind of locks them out of a pattern. Um, and as you'll see in some other ones, it's just completely. Well, this is, this is a very good example, actually. So, um, second layer right is Cloud Man, and he is weak to First Man's Danger Rap. So, shoot it out, encase him into a bubble, he drops to the ground. Lather, rinse, repeat, although I don't quite know what I was doing there and didn't shoot it off. So, uh, yeah, I actually got hit to Cloud Man when I'm wielding his weapon weakness. That's pretty bad. I also mistimed that. Again, such that the point where the danger rap didn't actually connect. But uh, yeah, if you time it well and do it again, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not having a good time here. But yeah, if you time it well and get the danger rap right, what am I doing? And I've got again. Oh dear, I haven't even watched this back before I decided to commentate on it. Gee, me, this is awful. You can absolutely hit Cloud Man without having to wait for him to do a lightning attack. I don't quite know what I'm doing here. Um, that was a really, really dreadful showing. But as you can see, it. Get, it it completely stuffs Cloud Man's pattern up. He means he doesn't do any of the bit where he drops down where the rain comes and you have to kind of, you know, not fall off the edge and he doesn't hover over you and try to sit on you. So, yeah, completely wrecks his pattern. As indeed, well, they all will, but this one does it very nicely as well. Middle, uh, second layer on the left, Junk Man. He is weak to Thunderbolt when you don't miss the Thunderbolt and get caught on the ground and get stomped on him. But as you can see, hit him with a Thunderbolt. He gets completely shocked, and all he will then do is jump from one side of the screen and shot and shoot junk at you downwards. So uh, yeah, absolutely renders him completely useless. So moving on to the third layer on the left-hand side, we have Turbo Man, and uh, well, we already actually used his weakness against him with a little trick. It is indeed Noise Crush. Um, we won't be one hit killing him this time because, of course, we can't really fire it in uh, from the teleporter. But uh, yeah, hit um, Turbo with the noise crush, and the scorch wheel is not is not an issue. Nor is any of the fire attack or the um, him trying to suck you in. He'll just go straight into his car phase. Now you can charge up um, noise crush and uh, hit him for more damage by you know shooting the no the noise crush at a wall, having it bound back to Mega Man, and then flinging a. Um, you know, a, a more powerful one at him, but I find this does a job rather, you know, reasonably nicely. When you don't get whacked by um, his car, and as you can see here again, the, oh, I didn't actually, I don't think I got hit to it during the regular stages, but yeah, if you get hit rammed by that car, it hurts like hell. Third layer on the right is Springman, and he is weak to Slash Claw. 
Not that I really didn't use it because Springman is ridiculously weak anyway. But uh, yeah, wait till he jumps at you, slash him, and he'll just to do this all the time. So he'll jump up to the up to the ceiling and try and um, fling his uh, arms at you. But uh, yeah, he's again completely stuck in this pattern. Every time he drops down, whack him with the slash claw. I'm pretty sure there's a nice animation at the end where you kind of look a bit. Uh, I don't know, he seems like he's split in two or something. I might be getting this confused with a different game, actually, but, uh, but it uses a similar weapon. But uh, yeah, as I say, just to, probably to repeat myself, but as you can see, every, the weapon weaknesses just absolutely render the Roman Masters you know, next to useless. He doesn't actually split apart. I think I must be thinking of a Mega Man X one. I think it might be um, Wire Sponge who, uh, who does that. So yeah, that's a completely different series, and I'm going way off track. <laughs> Um, bottom layer on the right is Burst Man, and he actually has two weaknesses. Um, Freeze Cracker is one of them, um, because obviously given the cycle at the beginning, um, he somewhat, I guess, needs to be weak to one of the, one of the robot master weapons at the beginning. Um, but in the essence of just showing off you know, each of the um, robot master weapons, he is also chronically weak to um, the Scorch Wheel from Turbo. So, um, as you can see, whenever you... Uh, do it, you send him flying backwards. So basically, he still does his bubble attack, he still send, sends out the danger rap, he still shoots bombs. He has shoots out a lot of bombs on the floor when you hit him with it, as indeed he would do, I think, with Freeze Cracker as well. But one thing you can guarantee is that he will always stay over to the right-hand side of the screen at this point in time. He won't jump to the middle uh, and force you to kind of, or he will jump, as you saw there, but he's not going to get anywhere near far enough over to the left to have to force you to use the bouncing walls to get over him. So that's the advantage of using um, Scorch Wheel, or indeed Freeze Cracker. So, one left, bottom layer, on the left, it's Shade Man. And he's weak to Wild Coil Spring Man weapon. So he still will go up to the top um, and potentially kind of um, you know, try and swoop at you. You can also again charge the, uh, the Wild Coil like I'm doing here, which will do more damage. And uh, since it's... Um, since you're going to be kind of killing time when he's up at the top of the screen anyway, frankly, you might as well do it. I didn't bother with the uh, the, um, uh, the noise crush on uh, Turbo Man, but here I thought it would probably worthwhile. As you'll kind of notice there, it doesn't necessarily take Shade Man out of his regular pattern, because when he's diving down, it, you know, he just keeps doing it anyway. But if he's on the floor shooting the, you know, his stun lasers and his, and his air and his noise crushes, then it will get him out of that pattern. But uh, slightly less crippling than, than, than all the other ones. Well, that's the eight robot masters defeated, and that brings us to a little bit of a pause here. I think I must have taken a break in the recording here, but uh, anyway, not for you, not for your purposes. We drop down this huge shaft, and we come to the Wily fight. I'm going to—I'm probably going to have a lot to speak about during the final phase, so I will probably start talking while he's kind of coming in and whatnot. But uh, yeah. He does have two phases, so this is his first phase, the Wily kind of machine, I guess, or Wily Walker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and as you can see, Wily kind of appears in that little window. Um, I decide to get out Thunderbolt. It works pretty well as a weakness. Uh, Charge Mega Buster shots would also work rather well, but uh, yeah, Thunderbolt does a very nice job of uh, dealing uh, quite good damage to him. Um, he kind of drops, as you can see, drops down. When, once, he, once he gets to one end of the screen, he will fly off or up off screen and he'll drop down. I tend to want to stand in the middle of the screen because it's never quite clear, or you never quite know which side of the screen is going to drop down on. Um, so yeah, if you're in the middle, then um, you should be able to react whether he, you know, whether he appears on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the screen. Um, sometimes he'll just jump from one side of the screen, a bit like now, or hop, or whatever, um, and you have to kind of slide under him. Um, Sometimes uh, he will drop down and shoot out the sort of mini Wily uh, Walkers. Um, and that's probably the most more annoying attack because you can't really kill these things very nicely. So you just have to kind of spend time messing around, jumping, jumping over them, luring them into you know, so they kind of overlap and then kind of you know slide under him uh, as well. The hit I took was really kind of freaking annoying. He kind of the hitbox there was really bizarre when I slid under him. But um, yeah, anyway. That's Wily first phase, and that is nothing compared to this. This is Wily Capsule number seven. This is the hardest flipping Wily fight in the entire, or any boss fight in the entire Mega Man Classic series, no question whatsoever. I'm gonna say here now, I, I think I do a pretty good job here, but I could do a much better one. What I do 
um, in order not to make this completely boring for you, um, I'm doing a kind of trick here. So I'm hitting it with Freeze Cracker, which means I can kind of aim it upwards. But um, here's me demonstrating what I would do if I was just playing for myself. I pause the game and switch to Thunderbolt. When I hit him with Thunderbolt, he then doesn't shoot out these four orbs of suck. <laughs> um, it kind of completely cripples him from that point of view. And as, as I'm so trying to muck around with pause menus and whatnot, I have, you know, I'm having a bit of a nightmare there. But yeah, what I would ordinarily do is hit him with Freeze Cracker, pause, or kind of toggle, because thankfully they are next to each other, obviously I, if I pressed L and R, they, so a bit like here, I've managed to do it without pausing. Um, yeah, toggle off the Freeze Cracker and hit him with Thunderbolt, that way I deal, a, I deal some damage to him, uh, but I also prevent him from doing that flipping attack. Um, he is actually weak to um, Wild Coil, but um, I always find, and again, I, again, I don't know if this is a, is a, is a anniversary collection thing, but if he's up high in the sky and the charged wild core just doesn't seem to get up high enough. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. I've tried jumping. I've tried staying on the floor when I shoot it. It doesn't quite seem to get up that high. And I don't quite know what's going on. But uh, anyway, yeah. So with that, I would recommend using that if you can and if you can hit him with it. Um, failing that, Freeze Cracker is always a good option because you can aim it in any which way direction you like. Um, and Thunderbolt is also very good if you, um, for preventing him doing this, doing that really stupid orb attack. And here is the orb attack. And anyone who's played this fight will know what I'm talking about. This is absolute hell when you first play the game. You simply just cannot dodge what he throws at you. You are completely unprepared for this boss fight. This attack it is ridiculous. These orbs come out really fast. They they pause and switch their movement at you three times and, and home in on you. They, they're just ridiculous to dodge, particularly if he's in the middle center. Um, as you're, as I, and so just like to kind of, um, say that, he kind of teleports in in the middle center a whole bunch of times and I take a whole bunch of damage. Um, you have to do your best to kind of three in a row. Thank you, Wiley, very much on cue. Um, if he's kind of over on the right-hand side or left-hand side of the screen, you can try and lure them and whatnot, but Seriously, I don't even want to estimate the number of lives this took on my first go. Probably with energy tanks and weapon tanks and whatnot all over the place as well. This is hell, seriously. Um, and I do probably take a bit more damage here because I'm not doing this trick because it would be incredibly boring for you to watch me pause it. So a couple of times I'm taking extra hits and whatnot. But I still think I do a pretty good job. But seriously, this orb attack is ridiculous. Um, the blue one turns you to ice, and then you then, which deals you quite a big damage anyway. You then take more damage because after his attack, after uh, once he attacks, he will always do this thing where he shoots electric things at the floor. So this one, um, so if you're frozen, you obviously get hit by that. The red ones kind of catch you with fire again, like scorch wheel or whatnot, and you stay kind of stuck for you know however many seconds and get caught. The yellow one only only kind of gets you as there and then. It doesn't do kind of any extra damage. And seriously, if if you know you're going to take a hit, get hit to the yellow one. Deliberately aim for a yellow one if it looks like you're going to take a hit. But man, oh man, this fight is ridiculous the first time you play it. And I only used one S tank and one energy tank. I'm not counting the second energy tank because I didn't take a hit. <laughs> oh my god! Screw you, Wiley. Okay, I give up. Sorry about all the trouble. I'll go quietly. I don't trust you, Wily. I gonna do what I should have done years ago. You, you forget, Mega Man. Robots cannot harm humans. I am more than a robot. Die, Wily. Never thought I'd hear Mega Man say that, but there you go. Well, go on then, Mega Man. Now's your chance. Too late, Mega Man. He who hesitates is lost. We shall return. So, as with any good Wily Fortress does, when you beat Wily, it explodes, collapses on itself, whatever.
And that brings up the credits for Mega Man 7. Oh boy, I'm probably going to talk a little bit more about that fight. I say, um, just a, a, a little, a little, a little bit more. Um, yeah, I say, I don't even want to know how many times I died to that first time. It is, it is seriously, it's just absolute hell. You just, you, you will not be able to dodge those orbs uh, the first you know, X amount of times you play it. It is a nightmare. It's seriously like, because Mega Man 6's final boss was a little bit kind of underwhelming in the difficulty department, so it, that one has three forms and it's all pretty easy. So it's like I don't know whether Capcom thought that they'd taken a bit of a bit of flack from you know the Mega Man community for you know Mega Man 6's final boss being too easy or whatever, but it's like they thought, okay, you thought Mega Man 6's final boss was too easy. Well, well, we'll fix that. We'll give you the hardest flipping wily fight you've ever had, and that's exactly what they did. That fight. The first phase is fine. It's you know it's 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 still probably not easy, but compared to the second phase, oh my god, it's it, it, it's it's the hardest Wily fight. It's the hardest boss fight in any classic Mega Man game, hands down, no question. There's there's no argument that could even be made on it. It just is, uh, and I'm sure anyone who's played the game before can attest to that. The first time they're doing it, you just cannot dodge. Those those orbs, you, you <laughs> it, it's just hell. I don't repeat it myself, but that fight is hell. Even when you don't know what to do, when you know what to do, it's a little bit better. But yeah, but uh, yeah, that uh, is the end of Mega Man Seven. As the kind of the credits have been coming, kind of rolling up. Um, I will be kind of doing my usual um, kind of sum up on difficulty analysis for the whole game as a whole and whatnot in a little bit, so what else can I say about the game? Um, yeah, I I really like the game. I, I, I will talk about it just in, in, in passing just a little bit, but I do feel this game takes a little bit of unnecessary flack for whatever reason, whether it's the fact that it was an NES game, whether the fa uh, sorry, that's not an NES game, whether it was that, you know, lots of people were moving on to... Um, in the you know, Mega Man X series, and it's it, it, it kind of paled in comparison to that in, in most people's eyes. And I think, you know, in all honesty, which game do I prefer? I probably prefer Mega Man X over Mega Man Seven, but that's not to say I really don't like Mega Man Seven. Um, again, it's ultimately in my fate, in my kind of the time in my life where I never got the chance to play it when it first came out, and it was only when I got the anniversary collection that I could play it. So I appreciated it, you know, for what it was when I got it. But um, yeah, it's probably not as good as Mega Man X, but it's still a damn fine game. Um, and as, as for you know whether or not it, 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 it supposedly lost some of its charm from not being an NES game, I don't know. But yeah, I don't quite know why it kind of gets the criticism it does. Um, you know, I know obviously um, Brenda Floss popularised um, downplaying Mega Man Seven, certainly in comparison to like you know two, three, and the other NES games. Well, you know. I don't know whether that's contributed, and that's just kind of stuck in people's minds and whatnot. But uh, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I, I think it gets. I think it. I think it takes an unfair rap. I think it's better than. I think it's better than most in the classic series, actually, and uh, I really enjoy it. It's the Wily Fortress. I can look back on in particular and think, okay, yeah, that was a real challenge. You know, that was what. Well, when you know when you know what you're doing, it's not ridiculous. It's not massively unfair, perhaps save for that fight, that, that that final fight, the very first time you do it. But certainly, when you know what you're doing and you get a bit more accustomed to things, it's difficult. It's never it's never not difficult, but it's a nice kind of fair challenge. And yeah, I I, I really enjoy it. It it feels it feels worthy of, of kind of a challenge in terms of, and I always feel kind of like pumped up when I do it, particularly the final fight. When it is, you cannot beat that final fight and not feel completely pumped up uh, having done it. So, yeah, I think the credits are about to end uh, very shortly, so so probably just kind of leave those thoughts there. I, I really enjoy Mega Man 7. It's probably, you know, near the top or certainly the top half of my favourite list. And uh, I don't quite re don't quite know why it seems to be so low on a lot of people's lists. So, as always, before concluding this video, let's look at the Perfect Run scoreboard. And yes, this is an amended version of the 8-bit version of this game. 
I thought it would be more helpful if the Robot Master's name is on display, and of course you don't get that with the original SNES game. I gave Spring a 1, Jungle 2, Burst and Shade 3s, Cloud a 4, Freezer 5, Turbo a 9, and Slash the Full 10, given that I can't perfect run his stage. And that equates to a total score for Mega Man 7 of 37. For comparison purposes, Mega Man 1 as a whole got a score of 29, Mega Man 2 scored 42, Mega Man 3 scored 34, Mega Man 4 scored 28, Mega Man 5 scored 21, and Mega Man 6 scored 28. So only Mega Man 2, thus far anyway, has provided a harder challenge. And this seems absolutely right. I wouldn't think of Mega Man 7 as being as tough as Mega Man 2, what with Wood, Air and Quick all present, but this was a considerable step up in difficulty, I'd say, on all the other games, and definitely coming off the back of Mega Man's 4, 5 and 6. Here, it's obviously Turbo and Slash that bump up the difficulty, but I do think my general greater unfamiliarity with this game over the NES ones helped contribute to a comparatively higher rating. Let me stress, though, that when I say unfamiliarity, I only mean that I don't perhaps know the layout of the screens and the enemy placement as solidly as I do the NES games. I still know where most things are in this game. And with Mega Man 7 having drawn to a close, that's 54 out of a possible 57 Robot Masters perfect run. Playing the original versions of the games anyway, I did of course manage to beat Air on the Wily Wars version. And for those of you wondering, you still haven't seen the last of the stages I haven't been able to perfect run, so do stick around. I did of course state at the end of Mega Man 6 that at least one no perfect run success stage would surprise you, and as I don't think Slash really qualifies as such, my earlier revelation therefore shouldn't come as any great shock. I think that really is about all I wanted to say about Mega Man 7. It certainly falls in the upper half of my favourite games in the classic series, almost alone for that final fight, which is the most epic confrontation with Wily in the entire series, and I do strongly feel, for whatever reason, that it gets a really unfair rap. It's way better than Mega Man 2, actually, in my opinion. And on that controversial note, in terms of what's coming up next on my channel, well, it won't be a Mega Man game, but nor will it be I want to be myself just yet. Again, I'm going to be mixing things up and doing something completely new. Should be kicking that project off very shortly. It's a recently released game, within the last year anyway, that has quickly become one of my favourite games of all time, and I'm really looking forward to Let's Playing it. So, I sincerely hope you'll join me for that. But until then, this is the end of Mega Man 7. Cheerio.